Okay. This recording just started, so I, I, for uh, legal purposes, I have to repeat again. Good evening, everyone. Okay. And uh, after the opening prayer that we'll we'll do together, those of you who have the book can follow. Uh, I'd like to read this uh, prayer in union with Jesus. It's not very long. It's not that short either. But, it, but it's beautiful, but it's, it's a nice contents. And um, Bert found it and uh, he shared it with the staff. I'd like to share it with, um, with the Pandora community. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable before you, Lord, our rock. Lord Jesus, grant me the grace to empty myself and be filled with your love, peace, patience, compassion, mercy, forgiveness, and understanding. Let every beat of my heart and every breath that I breathe be for you. Let every word that I speak be reflective of you. Let every glance I give be a mirror of you. Let every hand I touch feel your gentle care. Let every step I take be on your path toward your light. Let every word of praise I may receive be directed to you in humble thanksgiving. Let every angry word said to me or against me be returned with words of love and mercy, not anger and revenge. Let every desire I have be for you. Let my will conform to yours. Touch every cell of my body, Lord, and make me the person, the servant you want me to be. And so to Mary in this season of Advent, why don't we go to Mary who, who's so uh, crucial, so uh, takes such a central place, how she listened and how she was a disciple of her own son. And so together, let's recite the Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Blessed is the fruit of the fruit of Holy Mary, of God, for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O good shepherd, help me to see you. O good shepherd, keep us safe. O Mary Immaculate, pray for us. For us. Okay, where do we go from here, Bert? What's the plan for tonight? Yeah. The first, uh, okay. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exalt with all your heart. O daughter Jerusalem, the Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemy. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, I shall be said, it shall be said in Jerusalem, fear not, O Zion. Be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, mm -hmm. a mighty savior. He will rejoice over you and gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. Any words or phrases that stand out to, for you? 
He will sing joyfully because of you. It's beautiful. Festivals. <laughs> the Lord your God is in your midst. Shout for joy. Rejoice. Be not discouraged. Fear not. The Lord is in your midst. Coming in from the chat with from Ray, uh, removed the judgment, which is also one that I hit on as well. <coughs> Swallow. Shall we hear the reading again? Maybe we'll give her. Joanne will do it for a second time or somebody else signed up for a second time? Bert? No. You're on mute, Joanne. Yeah, you're muted, Joanne. I muted you for your coughing, so. Are, are you okay or would you prefer somebody I'm fine. Else? you're fine? I'm fine? I just okay. swallowed the wrong way. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exalt with all your heart. O daughter Jerusalem, the Lord has removed the judgment against you. <clears throat> he has turned away your enemy. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no, you have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, I sh it shall be said to Jerusalem, "Fear not, O Zion; be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst." And a mighty savior. <clears throat> he will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. Now we can feel free to share a little more as to how the reading strikes you, any personal experience, or any reflection on the context of when this um, reading was written. I think because he will sing joyfully because of you is just a wonderful thought. Mm -hmm. How the Lord takes delight in us, how, how we are beautiful in the eyes of God. Yes. A mighty savior, there is nothing that he cannot do. Ray commented in the chat about joy after disaster, a tornado, flood, war, accident, and you're still alive. But the wrath of God is a lot worse. So I guess the the contrast of the of of, of what joy means, I guess, in the in the sense that you know, no matter what's happening, that the mm -hmm. peace that that and we'll hear about it in the second reading, that peace that God gives us can bring us joy that goes beyond the situation. The book of Zephaniah. 
Messiah, to me, is worse than revelation. And at the end, <clears throat> you made the cut. You got to join the Jesus team. You got to join the Jesus team. So I'm very, very happy at that point. But if you read the, the preceding chapters, you know, you, you, you were sweating bullets. At least that's the way I read it. Uh, Revelation is no okay king, and Zephaniah is a lot more direct. That's why the church never reads that chapter. <laughs> Correct. There are times sometimes to read the, the doom that the Bible or Jesus or Zephaniah that, you know, can be read or, or should be read. Or I want to say the majority of the, this is up for de debate, but it's more the passages that the church chooses from the Bible to inspire and to encourage than those than the woes the woes of jesus or the the condemnation even though we do hear them especially in lent but, um, but it's, it's true what you're saying ray the, the church skips some some parts to highlight the the tone and the spirit that um, like for this coming sunday the tone is, is Gaudete, no? let us rejoice uh, that salvation is upon us, that the Lord takes delight in us um, and uh, avoid the, the parts that uh, are condemnatory because they, they were proper for the times when they, this was written before Jesus Christ, but now uh, it's, um, we don't wanna emphasize that aspect. I agree that during God's end, the first three chapters are not appropriate. But when I read the last part of chapter three, I have to remember what led up to all the joy. And being alive is certainly worth being joyful over. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I like the uh, last two lines, how God rejoices in you. He was sing joyfully because of you. So it's an interesting twist. I hadn't really thought about it that way or hadn't, hadn't read this before, that he's happy because of me. That's interesting. That's just like being happy for the success of your children. Totally understandable. very humbling the fact that the god of the universe the god that created everything that that he, and i believe there's you know there's who 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 is man that god has keeps him in mind right that, that just that that idea that i mean he has no need of us but yet he rejoices in us because of love because he is love um it's just yeah it's powerful very powerful that that idea of that to renew you in his love is um wonderful to think of that you can be renewed There was a uh, reading from last week in the Office of Readings, and um, I've been going over it several times because the description, and it's from St. Gregory Nanzianzen, that's it. Um, just the way that he is, because this is, this is the cause of our joy, it, uh, I believe, 
and he says, and it's just this, this short little beginning part that he share, that I want to share. He says, the very son of God, older than the ages, the invisible, the incomprehensible, the incorporeal, the beginning of beginning, the light of light, the, f- the fountain of life and immortality, the image of the archetype, the immovable seal, the perfect likeness, the definition and word of the father, he it is who comes to his own image and takes our nature for the good of our nature and unites himself to an intelligent soul for the good of my soul to purify like from like. He takes to himself all that is human except for sin. And like I said, I believe that's the cause of our joy. The fact that how great God is that he would come and become one of us to save one, to save us. Just, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, to me, it, uh, the passage is perfect for people that either feel like they are not worthy because there are so much, so, so much uh, so sinners, so much sinners. What they have done, it's uh, unspeakable. How can God, you know, look at them with any kind of delight? It, it hits perfect those who feel unworthy or down in the pits. So many you've, you've mentioned, you've mentioned them. So with, with different parts. Well, to me, they do not be discouraged. Um, touches me, but to be renewed, or <clears throat> not not remove the judgment. I like that too. So all of that hits hits right on on the person that is called to hope that it, God rejoices in you for who you are, you know what you have, not know what you have done, and not just who you are. You know, as a child of God. <clears throat> Okay, well, let's move on to uh, any anybody that wants to volunteer to to sing to sit where to no um, I looked at it and I I don't think I I remember a known um, melody for for this song, cry out with joy and gladness for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. You know, I think to my, uh, on, on Saturday or Sunday when I celebrate, when we participate in mass, I bet you that the minute the cantor will sing it, then I'm pretty sure you're gonna remember, remember, remember it, I mean, having heard it before. So. <clears throat> We'll move on to the second reading. Okay. So, Dora? Yes. Okay, Philippians 4. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request quest known to God. Then the peace of God that surpassed all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Any words or phrases? Have no anxiety at all. Rejoice. Yeah. Yeah. Rejoice in the Lord always. Yeah, rejoice. Right. 
by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, in the chat, also another uh, second of the have no anxiety and also uh, with thanksgiving, I think is, yeah. That, the Lord is near is what I had underlined when I went through this. The peace of God. Make known your request to God. Rejoice in the Lord always. Let's uh, go ahead and hear it again. Dora, please. Okay. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to, to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you. I think it's a reading that speaks to, to all of us. We can relate almost to every line that from, from the reading. Uh, Marie, Marie Leonard Fleckman, the author of this um, Ponder book, uh, in that paragraph at the bottom of that same page, uh, page 28, she writes, in prison and uncertain about his future, Paul focuses instead on Christ's return. That's very important, that, that statement. Christ's return means the Lord is near, either if it's in the parousia, the second coming at the end of times, or already in our midst, you know, through the spirit in the sacrament, um, the Lord is near. And that's for Paul, he, he was like many of the other early Christians, you know, they were under the uh, belief that the Lord was coming. I mean, just a uh, second time and, and last to wrap things up. And just that um, thought made his anxieties about being in prison uh, disappear. Like joy, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Meaning if you have a knife, somebody with a knife on your back, rejoice. <laughs> um, <laughs> the source of your joy is not the physical comfort or or peace, you know, the, the source of your joy is that the Lord will protect you, the Lord will be with you, the Lord will give you the peace that you need to trust that at the end, the, the, it's going to be good, it's, it's going to be, um, he's got your back, so to speak. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt that uh, Jesus will return someday, but right now I focus on him being near, i.e. he's always here. You can always talk to him. He's everywhere. You have the Holy Spirit within you, or soul, or whatever you want to call it. Your comforter is always here. So, yeah, every Christian knows there will be a judgment day. Christ will return again. I just don't focus on that on a daily basis. I, I expect a more immediate response. <laughs> yeah, we all do. <laughs> I want to know now while I'm alive, not after I'm dead. 
Get the gym. I think it's very powerful when um, at the at the very end, um, when I said earlier, make your request known to God. So when you pray in your petitions, your thanksgiving, when that is actually said and done, then the last sentence of the reading, then the peace of God with all surpassing understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. So when you do all this, you make this known to God, just like he has let us know his intentions. We give him our intentions. And with those intentions and your prayers and petitions, then peace will come to you and it will fill your hearts and your minds and it will keep you on the path of Jesus. Because without that, if just like if you don't say something, how are people going to know? Of course, you know, the Lord will know. But when you make an effort and let the Lord, your God, know, then you will receive that peace and he will protect you and keep you on that path. He will continuously give you strength to continue on that path, help you to grow your faith, so to speak. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. Right. Prayer is not so much to inform God of our needs. This is for our sake, for us to, to, to reassure ourselves that we, we need to let the Lord know in our minds that uh, we need him. We or we are thankful, whatever it is. But the serenity prayer that um, Ray Bond offers, I like, uh, you wanna read that, um, uh, Bert? The yeah. Psychiatry. So yeah, he's mentioning about how, uh, in connection with PTSD, that there's no real known how, why it develops with some, but not others, I guess. Um, exposed to the sim same events, uh, and he said, let, let me offer the serenity prayer. And then he goes in, God gave us a cognitive mind and we handle most events. Uh, we must forgive ourselves. This is where I was uh, focusing on. We must forgive ourselves and transfer the burden onto God, God's broad shoulders. It isn't healthy to carry guilt. And that's such a good point. And I think a lot of and, and not necessarily, I mean, not just people that, who deal with um, PTSD, but I think a lot of people tend to, to carry unhealthy guilt. Um, and, and it's like what you were mentioning earlier, Father, about people who are feeling unworthy, maybe that they feel like their sin is too big and that God, they're, they're, not, they're unforgivable right? Um, but that's not the case, you know, and, and I think to make that connection with, with uh, that last line, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, you know, uh, it, it's, it's Paul make Paul describes that peace in such a good way because there, it goes beyond comprehension. I believe the commentary talks about it. It's, it's, it's not a peace that we can understand because it doesn't make sense. It's, it's peace. Uh, you know, Paul's writing from prison. He's in prison and telling everybody to rejoice always. Um, it, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's, it's counterintuitive. It's like, I'm in prison, rejoice. And, you know, that kind of, I'll share a little bit if I, if I can real quick about the prayer that Father prayed uh, at the beginning. Um, I felt the need to share it this morning with the staff and, and if anybody else would care for a copy of it, I, I have, I have them. Uh, but I'm going through, I have this book, it's called uh, A Year with the Saints, and it's not a uh, today's the saint of whatever. It's just each month has a, a different uh, theme, and the, the theme of December is union, and it's focusing on uh, union with God's will. And it was hitting on everything that we're talking about today as far as when we have, when we're in line with God's will, then we all situations are in his will. And so that we can find that joy in everything, no matter what, whether it's something that is a difficult situation, we receive it as a blessing. 
uh, and that was the reflection for this morning was was about um, St. John Vianney talking about how he was sharing with a friend that they had uh, something they had lost something or or, or something uh, was stolen from them and he was telling his friend that it was a blessing and he explained that even if we receive affliction or trials that if we have if we're in line with God's will you know we'd rather be in uniform with God's will than anything else because that's where we can find that peace no matter what the situation is so yeah and happiness and joy that's yeah. correct also going along with not carrying guilt like that i think at least for me sometimes i kind of dwell on i regrets i regret that i didn't do something differently well there's nothing you can do about that so hopefully you learn so things will be better in the future or in the present I have the serenity prayer taped to the front of my refrigerator. So I read it several times a day. And I remind myself of what I can do and what I can't do. And if there's nothing I can do about it, why do I keep worrying about it? And it my life is very simple. <laughs> if I can handle it, I will. If I can't, say let me. I think, you know what? In our heads, we carry the guilt and, or in the heart, in our head, we know that you, we should get rid of the guilt that is not healthy. It paralyzes you or it diminishes your willpower to do good or to feel good about yourself to me the bridge between what we know we should do not carry the guilt and the way we feel which is remorseful or, or regretful is prayer when we discipline ourselves to be in people of prayer that we have some prayerful prayer pattern daily whether it is scriptures or the rosary or the life of a saint, mass can top. Mass is the best way to be within, on that bridge between God and, and us. Then it, it, um, we make it a reality that we feel joyful all the time, even after you have, we have a death in the family or we um, have a uh, and endless problems at home or at work. That's, I think that's, that's key. The prayer. Well, with the help of your prayer, it transformed. Over the years, I've done some things that I, not good. But with God's help, I will never make that same mistake again. And I believe Indeed, you do need his help because instinct and your animal spirit, you have the capacity to repeat. But with God's help, you don't. And I believe that you should begin all your prayers with Thanksgiving first because truly we have to be thankful first before we um request anything or you know we are blessed thank you I, go ahead i think the word peace really resonates with me because we live in a tumultuous world and that word peace and it surpasses our understanding is um, divine. Even if it's for just um, a very short time, it'd be nice to hear from those who wish 
uh, why are you joyful? Is there, is there anything that stands out about why you, you, you rejoice in the Lord always? If you want to share a little bit as to what threatens that joy, the anxieties that the scriptures talk about, uh, that they are there, like with St. Paul, I'm sure prison, being in prison was an anxiety, but, but he, he wouldn't he encourage his listeners to, to rejoice always. So that, that um, presence of both, you, anyone would like to share uh, with one word or a little explanation. Rejoice in family. What a blessing family is to all of us. Rejoice in what you have and what you don't, and not focus on what you don't have. Rejoice that you do have something because some people don't have what you have. I say rejoice in the sacraments. The sacraments bring you back with anxiety, with whatever it is, the sacraments will bring you back. I rejoice in the fact that uh, all my family is so close. You know, in all the deaths we had in the family, and we still stick together and uh, love each other and just take care of each other. And that's, you know, that makes it good for me. You know, I'm blessed to have the family that I have. And of course, all the friends that I have. God has blessed me with that. I thank you. I thank God for that. Interesting, the, the value of family. And I'm gonna go see my mom, God willing, on Monday, I should be seeing her. And that's cause for rejoicing. My brother and sister are leaving. Sister already left Venezuela. Brother is going to leave the day after I arrive. So the contrast, for example, between what you just said, Dora, you know, the, your family being cl so close knit and how beautiful. My family, I feel, is also close knit, but in a different way. Um, but it's a family I have. And the fact that I'm going to go see mom is a source of joy. It's beautiful. The anxiety is I'm going to be with her 24 7, 102 year old, beautiful woman, uh, but she's 102. So, um, the, the Lord give me the patience, you know, and the love and to treasure, treasure each moment. And then the anxiety of the permits and restrictions and you know, these these days, especially the return on January the second, with whether or not I'm going to be able to have all the documentation you know, from the Venezuelan government point of view, and then also the COVID in 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 time. If I'm going to have that in time to show, and then that they will be able to let me on the plane to come back. So that's that's it you know the joy overall i want to say i'm joyful but the anxiety kind of lurks lurks there <laughs> i'm very happy for you <laughs> you're going yeah <laughs> you know, we blessing. need you back <laughs> we're happy for him <laughs> yeah but we're sad yeah. for ourselves <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> rejoice that you get to back for you to and then we'll rejoice when you come home. That's for sure. <laughs> you need a break from me. To have a break from me is 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 healthy. So you 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 see. No. I re I rejoice in the rosary. What a <laughs> blessing that we have that. Um, to give you strength. We'll throw a party for you when you come home on January 9th. Yes. And you will be sent off with lots and lots and lots of prayers and good wills and wishing yes. and safe, re safe return to and from and that you have a blessed time with your mother because that's, I'm very fortunate. I get to see my mother every single day and I get to take care of her. So it's a true blessing that you get to do that as well. 
and you you have lots of prayers coming your way for you and your family. Thank you. That gives me a lot of comfort indeed, yes. Yes. Okay. Let's move on with um with the gospel reading. That would be Edie. Okay. The crowds asked John the Baptist, what should we do? He said to them in reply, whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none. And whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized and they said to him, teacher, what should we do? He answered them, stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, and what is it that we should do? He told them, do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire, quenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. It's a long reading. And, uh, <clears throat> any words, phrases? He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Do not falsely accuse anyone. Be satisfied. Share. Preach good news. Teacher, what should we do? I am not worthy. I mentioned in the chat from, from Ray, is, is the perfect ponder, what should we do? Okay, let's read it for a second time. The crowds asked John the Baptist, what should we do? He said to them in reply, whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized and they said to him, teacher, what should we do? He answered them, stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, and what is it that we should do? And he told them, do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. 
he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. What have you liked from the reading? How do you relate to it? Any thoughts? Hmm. Teacher, what should we do? Um, I was a teacher for 20 years. <laughs> and um, know how few answers we really have. And um, it's exciting to know God as a teacher. And we can, we can hear him in the gospel, in the rosary, um, and saints. May I ask you what kind of a teacher were you? Uh, elementary? Um, or? I'm an artist and I taught art um, to elementary students. I, I turned on the light bulb. I taught them to, and showed them many religious um, famous works of art, um, Rembrandt, um, all the greats. Um, it was a joy. Beautiful, God bless you for that. One of the statements I like the best when teachers talk about their profession or their vocation is that every time they teach, they learn. They always, yes. they always end up uh, learning something from their teaching or from their students. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Whether it be personally or through your craft. Um, children are brilliant and usually very poignant, you know, um, they're special. <clears throat> it's interesting that uh, John the Baptist knew when he was in utero, when he was in the, his mother's womb, he knew that he was in the presence of Jesus when the, their mothers met. So, so he knew very early on, he wasn't the one. Ray brings up a question in the, in the chat. How many times are the words born again, repent, transform and turn away used in the New Testament? And God must, that God must care about our character. Um, I would go so far as to say not even, not just in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament too. The prophets were always telling the, the people of Israel to, to turn back, to turn back, repent. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, he's, he, uh, the, just the idea that uh, God is consistently uh, seeking us. To, to have that reconciliation with us. It goes back to our earlier conversation about just how, how amazing, how humbling it is that God would, would do that. Why would uh, John the Baptist tell um, soldiers do not practice extortion? Does anybody know? Why to the soldiers? <laughs> As I <ever. laughs> As I understand Jewish history, the tax collectors were paid by the surplus taxes that they could take. Soldiers, there, there was no repercussion for inhumane treatment. No consequence, they could do whatever they wanted and nobody, in authority here. Mm -hmm. Just another slave, just another Jew. 
Who cares? Right. That's, that's the way I heard. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's true. I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it could be just um, as John was preaching, not only to the, to the crowd, but um, I think it was recognized as the tax collectors, the soldiers, and so forth, letting them all know is don't do bad, do good, do kind of like do unto your brothers as you would have them do unto you. So don't mm -hmm. collect more than what is as prescribed. And to the soldiers, don't falsely accuse somebody because in turn you know it's not right don't do it trying to get them basically get them onto the path showing showing them that the lord is coming because john is saying i'm baptizing you in water but the one to come is even greater so it's, he's trying to tell everybody prepare everybody stop with the your bad deeds your corruption and look at the good because i'm trying to, i'm telling you that the one greater than i is coming and to be prepared Thank that's you. my yep. and in today's world you can use the seat buying coercion well you know maybe even the tax collector taking more than their fair share uh, that's another issue. Uh, yeah, I think as with as with all scripture, you know, God, uh, John the Baptist's voice is is not just for the people of his time; it continues to be for for us as well. Um, I think of um, last week with uh, Deacon June's homily. There was one phrase that he uh, he said that that stood out to me. I wrote it down. Is it that John the Baptist? is the voice of Advent. I thought that was very, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that stuck with me. Because, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Insightful. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the, the voice of Advent, that, that time of preparation, mm -hmm. which was what, what John was meant for. He was the, right. he was the- I like to connect the, that, that preparation, that uh, prepare the way of the Lord with uh, justice. Mm. And what Debbie you know, was saying about you know, to these prominent people in society, the tax collectors, the soldiers, you know, just just get back on track, you know, do not practice extortion, do not false, uh, false, falsely accuse anybody. Um, all these uh, admonitions, it's justice and the, the uh, top, I think, justice, so the, the best justice one can practice is the, the very first, um, advices that uh, John the Baptist gave, you know, whoever has two clothes, uh, share with a person who has none. Um, that, that, is, um, that is beautiful, you know, I mean, I, I praise God for all the um, work that St. Vincent de Paul does in our parish and in the many ways that parishioners do on their own, whether it is um, through the collections we take up or whatever charities they have chosen to, you know, to support, being mindful of the needs of others. It's, um, it's a wonderful way to prepare the way of the Lord. You know? It's, it's um, the, the voice of Advent, the voice of John the Baptist, um, telling us to do what, what I think we are trying to do. And that's very, that um, gives me a cause for rejoicing. I rejoice over all that we are doing as a community. What else? We receive so many charities and you really feel bad that you can't help them all. So you kind of have to choose a few. Mm -hmm one at a time, and they asked Mother Teresa, St. Mother Teresa, how do you expect to solve the poverty of your country, India, with whatever billion of poor people? And her answer, looking at the journalism, his eyes was one at a time. That's how we're gonna solve the problem. <laughs> so wise. 
<laughs> but if you give to one charity, <laughs> then they keep wanting more every time. <laughs> Sometimes it can be something very small. I had a student who came to school all the time without shoelaces and his shoe, he had sneakers and they would flop. And when I gave him a shoelaces, I, you know, and I kept extra ones, um, he was so glad. You get more in return than what you give. Yes, your happiness multiplies. When you give with your heart, that is the best gift you can give. So it doesn't matter how much you give. It's If it's from the heart, the Lord knows. And you, you'll be blessed for that. And you'll feel blessed and rejoice in what you're giving because it's coming from the heart. That reminds me of the conversation, Father, we were having last week at our staff function about mission trips and how mm. um, that, you know, we, we go with the intention of helping others and doing for others, and we end up receiving so much more by, by our service, you know, and, and, that, and it's not necessarily just you have to go on a mission trip to experience mm. that, you know, I'm sure that, uh, I, you know, Edie could probably attest to that as, as somebody who works with St. Vincent de Paul directly. Um, you know, anybody who does anything you know, uh, of service can, can attest to the, the, the joy that comes from it. And you know, we receive back tenfold. Sometimes it's a smile. Um, I enjoy coming into church because people are smiling and um, greeting you um, with joy. Well, I think we appreciate church more too since COVID. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And we can see a smile. <laughs> Every, everybody seems very joyful in church. A smile. Yes. Those that come through St. Vincent de Paul, they expect nothing and receive something and say, God bless you for being here for me. It's, it, it is really a wonderful feeling. It's kind of, it's kind of weird when we put the groceries in their, in their cars, we say thank you to them. We say, and, and then one lady said, she kind of looked at me like, no, nah, no, thank you. I said, no, no, no thank, thank you for thank coming you. by. Yes. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, we're close to wrapping it up at 7.30. So why don't we lift up uh, in patience and prayers to the Lord in this, uh, um, in this session. Continued health for my oldest brother, who was uh, cancer-free. Gerald, Gerald, Jeff, Gerald, Douglas, Douglas, <laughs> Douglas. Thank you. For my husband Joe, who's going into radiation treatment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. Lord. I ask for continued blessings for my mother, for her healing, that she doesn't have daily pain, that you bless her and keep her going strong. And all the families who have loved ones who are, who have different ailments, may they find peace and love in your heart and that you bless them and, and uh, wrap them in your loving arms as the blessed mother would do with all her children, just to keep them safe and happy. We ask this in your name. Lord, hear Thank her. Her. Thank her. For the military community, for all soldiers, uh, for the large 
military presence in our parish in, in our in the city of San Antonio uh, for their protection, their well-being, the, for the veterans. We pray. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayers. For Christy Weaver's um, husband, I believe his name is Jerry, who had a stroke today, yesterday. but he is yesterday, but he came home from the hospital and he, uh, he seems to be on, on the road to recovery. Let us pray, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. 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 For those uh, who generally are with us in our uh, sessions, conversations, um, for our Advent journey, for those who can make it tonight, for their well-being, and blessings upon them all, we pray. Lord, hear our Lord, hear our prayer. Bye, con Dios, Padre. Gracias, Padre. Let's pray for a safe trip for you and joyful trip for you, Father. Let us all lift him up in prayer for him and his family that they have a beautiful reunion and a wonderful yes. time together. And we ask for a safe journey. We ask this to the Lord. Lord, he have our uh, yeah, for you. I ask the Lord to bring him back safely to us. Yes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our I know John will miss you because if you're not saying the mass, he said it's not the same. Uh, uh, from the chat, Ray uh, said, thank, thank, thank you for allowing David to pass peacefully with his family around him. So for that, for the repose of the soul of David, we pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Yeah. I'd like to pray in Thanksgiving for God's creation, especially the the companions that he allows us to have in, in our pets uh, for the loss of our of a, one of our dogs that passed away on Tuesday for Bono, Bono uh -huh. here. So we're praying Thanksgiving for for the time that God gave us with them. Pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the kids um, who are uh, for the First Communion children that are preparing for their first confession this Saturday, and also for their parents who are encouraged to join them in receiving the graces of the sacrament, or at least a blessing for their journey, for their journey in becoming better mentors for their children, we pray. Lord, yeah. <laughs> these intentions and those that aren't spoken, we uh, gather them with the prayer Jesus taught us, as we say. Our Father. Our Father. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Be thy day. 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 Be and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. The glory of yours. The Lord be with you. Amen. And with you, spirit. Rejoice always. Uh, and the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you all. See you in church. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Tomorrow. Take care. Take care. <laughs> that, that blessing was better than Deacon Elmer's. <laughs> That was recorded, Edie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you were you were not muted. Good night, y'all. Good night. Good night. Good night.